You are listening to Model Mentality. Welcome to Let's Get Clinical by Dr. Ali. In this segment, I explore connecting the dots between our guests' personal stories and the larger mental health context. You are listening to our interview with Rachel Hilbert. Let's review part two of Rachel's story. Rachel was diagnosed with bipolar disorder towards the end of 2019. And this was after a lifelong history of mental health experiences from ADHD to anger to anxiety and depression. However, with the new diagnosis and being on the right medication, Rachel has felt more level. But then COVID-19 came along, and as you heard in her story, the past six months have been challenging. This is the case for so many, especially those who have pre-existing mental health conditions. What stands out to me from a clinical perspective are two things from this interview. First, Rachel's mention of the stigma of bipolar. And second, what bipolar disorder is and how it can present. First, let's talk about stigma. Rachel mentions that she herself had certain misconceptions around what bipolar is, and therefore it was much harder for her to come to a point of acceptance after she was diagnosed initially, until recently. Bipolar disorder is common and part of the human experience. In fact, an estimated 2.8% of U.S. adults had bipolar disorder in the past year, according to the National Comorbidity Survey. Despite how common it is, it feels to me that we don't talk about it enough. Sure, there are a few examples on TV and in film where a character may have bipolar disorder, but we've only scratched the surface and sometimes it is portrayed in a way that could be more stigmatizing. As a psychiatrist, I have had the privilege to witness and meet the breadth and depth of people that live and function with bipolar disorder in our society. Rachel is one of so many and her bravery in speaking up about her diagnosis is inspiring and needed to help normalize the conversation on this mental health condition. Second, what is bipolar disorder exactly? Bipolar disorder is best characterized by episodes of depression, alternating with episodes of mania or hypomania, in which often people can feel unusual shifts in mood, sleep patterns, racing thoughts, energy, activity and productivity, impulsivity, concentration, and in general, how they're functioning with daily tasks. Bipolar disorder can take a variety of forms, and often those who are in a depressive episode are more likely to seek out help from a professional. Bipolar disorder is usually diagnosed in the late teens or in early adulthood. And as you heard in Rachel's story, she struggled from a myriad of symptoms ranging from depression to anxiety to mood swings, and only recently culminating in a diagnosis. The way that Rachel's journey has evolved is not an uncommon story. What is important to note is that bipolar disorder usually requires treatment for the long term, but the good news is with the right medications, the right therapy, loved ones on board to help, and knowing your signs and symptoms, especially those at the beginning of an episode, it is possible to manage your illness and have a good quality of life with the right supports in place. I have utter respect for Rachel to take the time to open up with us about her recent disclosure, the stigma she has felt around bipolar disorder, and her bravery in speaking up about this important topic and human condition. Many people are affected by bipolar disorder and struggle with stigma, and we want you to understand that you are not alone, that there is power in speaking up and in asking for and receiving help. Thank you for listening to Model Mentality and our interview with Rachel Hilbert. As always, if you are in crisis or you think you may have an emergency, call your doctor or 911 immediately. If you're having suicidal thoughts, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255 to talk to a skilled, trained counselor at a crisis center in your area at any time. If you are located outside of the United States, call your local emergency line immediately. What you have heard on Model Mentality does not represent what would take place during a psychiatric assessment or an actual therapy session. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Model Mentality. If you like today's content, please subscribe to Model Mentality or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, don't forget to rate and review us. Model Mentality is brought to you by Mind Studios.